Comprehensive Design Approach for Field-Oriented Control for of Interior Permanent Magnet Synchronous Machine. My name is Tiago Davi Cunibuzarello, and I'm a professor at the Federal University of Santa Catarina, Brazil. Let me give you the agenda of this presentation. I will start with a short introduction, then I'll go to the system description. Later, I will show you very briefly the dynamic model of the interior permanent magnet synchronous machine. Then I'll go to the step-by-step -step procedure for controlling the current and the speed of the machine. This is the main focus of this paper. Then I'll show you some case studies with high range loop results. And in this case, I'll present you two cases. So I have here a design procedure and then I will try this design procedure using two different machines and then I'll end this presentation with some conclusions. Introduction. The permanent magnet synchronous machine is actually a mature technology and widely used in the engineering field. We see that this machine is, is located in a lot and a variety of applications and in the recent years permanent magnet synchronous machine gained considerable attentions due to its applications in the electrical vehicle area, mainly because of their high power density, low maintenance and high controllability. Again, this machine is quite old, that it is a really mature technology, even its drive, but with the increased use of electrical vehicles and this machine being a promise, a, a, an attractive choice for such uh, vehicles, some attention has begun again. And two of the most common counter strategies for interior permanent magnetic synchronous machines are the field oriented control and also the direct torque control. And this paper tries to present a comprehensive design approach for a field oriented control of interior permanent magnetic synchronous machine. In fact, we can find a lot of materials, books, and papers describing. Uh, the methodology to design uh, such kind of controls for this machine, but I'll try here to give you a systematic list in which you follow step by step, including the parameters of the machine, and then finally you can get the controller's parameters. And the current controllers are designed based on the setting a desired closed loop time constant, while the speed controller is designed based on a frequency response approach which is kind of different from the conventional method. To design the current controller, I am using the classical method that we can find in books, but the speed controller here is designed a little bit different from the conventional methods. In my case, I am using a frequency response approach. System description. This, I have here a figure describing the system. I have, her, I have here a DC source, a three-phase inverter and the machine. We are measuring the current that goes through the, through the machine and also I'm using an encoder for the control strategy. The encoder could be uh, removed and you can estimate these quantities, speed and position, but for the control strategy presented in this paper, it doesn't matter if the speed is coming from an encoder or an estimation algorithm. And this is the control strategy of this field and control for this machine. It's a classical one. If you check here very fast, you see here that the currents are measured and then they are transformed into DQ references. They pass through a PI controllers for current and have here also the speed controller in this block diagram. So we are, we are using a space vector modulation to modulate the transistors of this inverter. The point is here is how to design this PI, this PI, and this PI. We see some books describing that, but again, we are trying to propose a systematic list in which you can design this parameter in a straightforward manner. And besides that, the speed controller is designed based on the, the frequency response approach. Dynamic model of the interior permanent magnetic synchronous machine. I have here some equations describing the model of the machine, you can see here that they are in DQ reference frames and they are for, for interior permanent magnetic synchronous machine in which you have different inductances for the Q axis and the D axis. The resistance is the same for both axes. So we have here 
other equations and how of then describe the dynamic model of the machine. Then the step-by-step -step procedure, which is the main topic of this paper. Starting with the current controller, the current controller, as I showed you in the block diagram, is based on two PI controllers. So we have here different parameters for Q axis and D axis. And then the first step is knowing the system parameters. I have here a table showing you that all the quantities that you need to know beforehand following this step-by-step -step procedure. I have here the parameters and the unit so that you can compute all the remaining equations using this parameter. So you need to know the stator resistance, the direct inductance, the quadrature inductance, the number of poles, the flux linkage, and etc. Then the second step is defining the desired time constant. We have a quite common uh, consideration here that you can define the time constants as this one. And the third step is computing the proportional gain of the Q axis, and then you can use this equation. The step number four, computing the integral gain of the Q axis. So using this equation here. And finally, have designed the current controller for Q axis. Following the procedure, now we have step number five, which is computing the proportional gain of the D axis, and also the Step number six, compute the integral gain of the deal D axis. And this is, is the equation. Then after controlling the after designing the current controller, go to the speed controller. And the speed controller is also based on a PI controller. So we need to compute KP and KI. And the first step is define the desired time constants for the speed controller. In this case, we can define the time constants as 10 times higher than the time constant of the current controller. And the second step is defining the cutoff frequency of the closed loop speed controller. So we can define the frequency, the cutoff frequency as 102 decades before below the switching frequency. Third step, computing the proportional gain of the speed controller. So this is now in which I was describing the frequency response approach. You can plot the open loop frequency response. You can design here for a specific uh, cut -off, uh, desired cutoff frequency. So you, you have this frequency as the desired one, as 200. So you have here such a gain that must be compensated. So your KPS will be based on this. And the fourth step is computing the integral gain of the speed controller. And for that, you can use these equations that you have just previously computed. Then, having a design step-by-step -step procedure, following all those steps, I can try in two machines, different machines. So I have here the system parameters for case one and the system parameters for case two. And now I go with the case study with hardware in the loop results. But I'm using here two different machines in order to show that that systematic list can be designed, can be used for different machines. For instance, the first machine has six poles, the second has four poles, and they have here different parameters as well. So after following all the procedure, all the steps, I finally compute all the parameters of the controllers for case one and for case two. Then I go to the results. I'll show you here results just for case one. Case two had similar results. I invite you to take a look at the paper. But let's take a look here to some results. The first one is the speed of the machine, the current stator current for phase A and B, and, and the theta signal, which is the router position. So in, this is in steady state. They are working quite good. Now applying some transitions. The first one, I applied here a, a, a load torque varying from 10 newton meters to 2.5 newton meters. We can see here that the speed was at such a, a velocity. And then after the transition, the speed is still being controlled at the same reference, even though the load torque has changed. If you take a look at, at the current after the transition, we can see here that they have similar behavior than previous in this case. And naturally, as I reduce the torque, the current has been reduced 
as expected. A second case now in which I maintain the torque constant, but I change the set point of the, the speed. So I was running the speed with, with this value and then the set point is this one. And you can see here that after the transition, the speed is being controlled, the torque is constant, so the current is kept unchanged before and after the transition, I mean. So you can see here in a zone that the current is being controlled as expected. Similar results were obtained for the case too. You can take a look at the paper later. The rather in the loop setup is shown in this picture. I have here the hardware in the loop. I have here the microcontroller. So all the control stretchers is running actually in a real microcontroller. And this is a short block diagram in which I have here. I have here the control card. Again, all those block diagrams are implemented in a digital environment over here. I have here an interface board and I have here the hardware in the loop uh, 402, which is emulating the machine, the DC source, and the inverter. I have here a scope in order to collect the results through this paper. Some conclusions. This paper proposed a comprehensive design approach for a field oriented control of interior permanent magnetic synchronous machine. The speed controller was designed using a frequency response math in which is quite different from those we can find in the literature. With such a procedure, two case studies with different machines were performed and the whole system was tested in a hardware-in-the-loop device with external microcontroller. From the point of view of the microcontroller, this research is experimentally validated. So results demonstrated the efficacy of the proposed design approach under steady state and under steps in the reference speed and the mechanical load torque. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. If you have some questions, I'll be so glad to answer them.